How to buy real estate with a partner. How to invest in Toronto real estate with another person. This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate expert, realtor, agent. And today we're going to talk about how to buy real estate with a partner. Okay, so Toronto real estate prices are very expensive and everyone wants to buy them, but not everyone can afford them anymore. If you've been one of those who bought real estate in Toronto earlier, very good. Congratulations, that's amazing. But uh, a lot of new entrants to the market. Uh, you just finished university. You have a couple bucks to uh, saved. Uh, you, know, you have a bit of money, but it's not enough to buy in Toronto. Maybe you're looking at outside of Toronto, like a video before that I showed you how to buy outside of Toronto. But today we're going to sp speak about how to partner up. Okay. So partner up is a great opportunity for you to acquire real estate and to start um, riding the wave of real estate, to start acquiring properties and get access to value through that um, but sometimes you don't have enough and you need to do it with someone else or maybe you have the money but you don't have the time so I have a, a quick video for you here today to explain how to buy real estate with a partner what it means everything you need to know okay Yossi Kaplan here Yossi Kaplan uh, dot com tweeted dot com slash Yossi Kaplan Toronto Realtor mortgage agent how to invest in real estate this is what I do uh, these are my sites urban realty Toronto dot com there he is, York Real Luxury Real Estate, million dollar plus properties, $27 million listings in Toronto, lots of videos, explanations, everything you need to know to learn about investing in Toronto. And I include all the links uh, for you to see. Just click on this link. If it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's probably been sold. Okay. Uh, my YouTube.com slash Yossi Kaplan. You'll find everything. Thank you, everyone, for been subscribing and watching recently. The stats are amazing. So I'm going to dive right into it. Um, I prepared a search here and I did a search on Hamilton which reduced price over $200,000 so you go to yossi.searchrealty.co and if you want the shortcuts just go to urbanrealtytoronto.com or go to yorkvilluxuryrealestate.com uh, those links are the same on the side here the side banner or at the bottom you'll find pre-made searches already programmed into the site most expensive town of Penelope's Con of the Pool, Assignments Law, Freeholds, uh, links to sites and at the very bottom of the page, uh, these links will um, here, they're the exact same links. So if you click on uh, most expensive, it'll open uh, a jump link, what's called, okay, a referral link, and it'll go right to yossi.searchrealty.co, and here it'll give you what it found. So let's just play the game here, um, and let's look at this $8.1 million uh, condo right here to Cheddington Place okay so let's say you wanted to buy uh, this lovely unit here with our partner okay it doesn't really matter which one it's kind of a fun one to look at okay so let's say we wanted to buy this place here or maybe I wanted to buy uh, some decrepit home uh, somewhere and I'm looking for crazy deals like a fixer-upper there is something uh, let's look at this one here that's kind of looks kind of cool and that's a little shack here four hundred thousand dollars for this shack oh my god um, what exactly are we buying here? I don't know, but it's all good. Maybe it's got a large lot, something I don't know. Maybe it's overpriced, but it's, it's kind of fun to look at. So uh, I'm looking here, and I want to buy this unit with a partner. So first of all, why why would I buy real estate with anyone, okay? So there's a few reasons. Uh, one reason is, and I'm just going to flip through. By the way, as I talk, I'm going to flip through properties to kind of make it visually more appealing. There's a 23,888,000 uh, mansion. Uh, at High Park Circle, okay, it's been on the market for a while, obviously, nice drawn pictures here from the winter time. Um, so why would I buy real estate with someone? Why would a partner to buy real estate with, with a partner? Okay, so the first reason is, of course, I have no money. So I, I, I want to own real estate, but I have no money, okay? So I got to go find the funds. And usually if it's just me and I'm buying a little home, whether it's a 23 million here, or the $400,000 home or whatever it is, I'm going to look for someone to help me finance that. So it could be mom and dad loan me some money. Uh, it could be anyone. So I got some profiles for you here, some profiles, and they're pretty funny. Um, so the first profile would be a parent, a, a mom. How would you buy real estate with your mother, okay? So the mother goes, oh, you know, Yossi, I saw this really nice uh, um, house, and it's uh, right here in Hamilton. There it is, $399. You know, I'll give you the deposit funds. I'll give you $100,000 for deposit, and you do the rest. How about that? 
So that means that in this case, the partnership goes like this. Well, one person gives the, the, the funds for deposit, and the other has to take care of everything else, which means this is a very typical situation. That's why I start with it. So mother gives me $100,000, and then I take the mortgage under my name, title maybe under my name or with the mother, and I'm responsible for the monthly payments and, and uh, maintenance and upkeep of the house, okay? So maybe I live there or maybe I rent it out, but mother says, look, I don't have any time, I'm not even town, here's a hundred thousand, um, go by and make sure it stays and make it good so there's value appreciation that you can enjoy for a long time from now, okay? So, uh, and then out of this partnership, what does the mother want, the person who gives you the money? Well, they can say, you know, um, it's a gift, I need nothing for it, or maybe I want a percentage of the property, so when you sell it, you know, some comes to me, or maybe in a few years from now, um, obviously kids here when your kids grow and you move out maybe uh, you refinance it or if you rent it out I want a portion of the cash flows so these are typical scenarios you find when you buy real estate with a partner okay um, that's and that's what I call the mom scenario the parent scenario basically they they're almost like gifting you the deposit and with that deposit with that initial money you can go acquire the property and then you strike whatever deal you want with them, okay? Um, let's find another property to pick up, pick on. Uh, how about this 459 house? That looks like a nice little bungalow here. Okay. okay, so uh, now I need uh, this, is, uh, and you see it's been reduced uh, by $20,000, so a great deal. Maybe I get it for 450 okay? So the parent will say, okay, you know what? Um, I'll give you, uh, whatever, $150,000 uh, deposit. Get it for 450 and then 300 mortgage that's yours to keep okay and then i move in the house i enjoy it or i rent it out and i manage it so the partnership here is one person puts a deposit and the other does all the upkeep the maintenance and everything they have to do in order to keep this property afloat um, appreciating and making money if it's a rental property okay um, now let's look at the other perspective which is uh i'm just going to hit the million dollar class see what comes up just for fun there you go Lots of nice stuff. Here's a two million in Oakville, and of course, if you go here, highest price. Okay, you'll get a fifty-nine million dollar property. So, let's look at this one. That's in Oakville. That's a little mansion in Oakville. So, let's say somebody says, "Look, I want to buy this fifty-nine million dollar mansion in Oakville," but you know what? I got all the money in the world, but I got no time. Okay, so I'm gonna give you fifty-nine million dollar. We'll buy it for cash. You're gonna be my partner. You're going to get some points in this investment, investment, but you have a certain a job to do, which is to maintain the property, take care of it, uh, maybe put the tenants in, maybe live there yourself, and then we strike a deal between us, a private deal, outside of the agreement of purchase and sale, and we say who owns what, who has to do what. I have a list here that I'll go with you, I'll give you some pointers about this, and you know what's going to happen in each case. There's a nice little indoor pool, I mean, you should get you should get some good stuff for, this could be a garage or a chapel or maybe even a storage room. Very nice. Outdoor pool, lovely place, tennis courts. You'd expect that from $50 million, $59 million, okay? Uh, let me look at my notes here. Um, the last, uh, the last uh, possibility I have here is that I want to help someone out. So, you know, most typical parents won't spend $59 million, uh, on a house for their kids, but they may spend uh, less. Okay, um, so let's let's look at the filter here, and you can see how I do this. I'm gonna limit the price here to say six hundred thousand. Okay, from two to six, and if I wanted to search only for condo, condo apartment, condo townhouse, condo townhouse. Uh, okay, that's a lot lot of. Uh, okay, so here I find one here, five ninety nine, on Red Path, Young and Egg townhouse, perfect. So I want to buy this townhouse at Young and Egg, and. <clears throat> I want to help you out. So here's two hundred thousand dollars. The mortgage four hundred because you can afford it because uh, we know your affordability because we're checking for the mortgage, we do the pre-approval pre application, all that stuff. It's all good. So now you can go and uh, use this money to acquire this townhouse, and then you would buy it or rent it out, and maybe you manage it for us. It depending on what kind of partnership we strike. Okay, they're not not all partnerships the same. But that's basically why you would buy with someone. Number one, you have money. Number two, you have no money. 
number three, you have skills or availability. For example, you can uh, manage the property, you can lease it, you can fix it, you can make it better, you can make it earn more money. Okay, so that's what you bring to the table. Okay, why would you do it? Okay, now let's look at some of the pros and cons. Very important to understand the pros and cons of of this type of thing of buying real estate with a partner. And remember, the reason we're buying real estate with a partner is because we need to improve our situation. So whether I have the money or no time, or I have the time and no money, or I have skills, or I have customers, or I have anything unique that can uh, bring to a partnership and make both of us uh, uh, do better. Okay, it's very important because both of us need to feel that we're getting something out of it because if one person feels or one side, or maybe it's more than two uh, partners, if one or more feels that they're not get, they're getting the short end of the stick, um, they're gonna not be happy about it, and maybe they wanna uh, look for a way out or whatever it is. It, it's it's gonna squeak. So you gotta make sure before you enter into any kind of a deal, any part partnership, not in real estate but in life too. Um, you know, any partnership, both sides should feel good about it and understand that it may not be perfect, but in the grand scheme of thing, uh, they're benefiting. Okay, so that's that's nice. Uh, 3018 Young, great building, the old Toyota at Young and Lawrence. So you can grab the condo here. Here's the floor plan, okay? And uh, 599 so that's your typical $1,000 a foot condo at Young and Lawrence. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> let me go through th th some pros and cons. Um, okay, so pros and cons. Uh, the first thing I have here is control, okay? so. If you're a person that really needs to have control over everything and you go into a partnership, you got to make sure that within the partnership itself, um, you allow yourself for control. So first of all, the other partner or partners understand that you want to be in control. Second, that it needs to be in writing and of course that everyone agrees. Okay, the most important thing that everyone has to agree together before you even start to do anything because really like, uh, you know, like real estate deals take time. Buying a place takes time, lots, lots of effort, lots of money, lots of expenses in getting in and out of the deal. So you want to make sure that everyone is in the same wavelength, okay? Here is a 600,000 place at a Studio Condo at Richmond. <clears throat> 605 square feet, so just under 1,000 a foot, 999 a foot, okay? So that's, that, that's your typical acquisition these days because it's a it's a one bedroom one bath and someone needs to live there but probably the person who's going to live there may not be the person who's going to own it uh, or put the money on okay, in okay uh, another another so control who controls who controls the property who controls the money who decides everything what happens what happens what happens if you got to think about these things uh, number two is the person that puts the money can say you know my my funds are at risk I'm risking my money here so what am I getting in return for risking my funds? Do I get a surety? Do I get a incrementation, incrementation uh, a raise of values? Um, could the property be improved? Can I get more out of this? Okay. So risk and return. What's the return for the risk for my money? The other thing is uh, time. Okay. Time is just as important. So I want to invest in something, but I'm, I'm stressed for time. Maybe my life situation, maybe I'm busy at work, maybe I'm doing so well, but now I'm sitting on a bunch of cash and I want to invest in real estate, but I don't know where to put the money, okay? So I have done uh, deals with people where uh, somebody puts the money and I will manage the property for them, and that's quite common, um, maybe not so much in Toronto, but it's common um, outside of Toronto and in the States too, where you find these partnerships where one, one party puts the fund the funds and the other party takes care of everything else. That's very, very common and it's typical, okay? But the actual partnership itself can take various forms, okay? This just, uh, this just finished, 875 in Queen, so these are assignments. So you say, hey, here's a nice assignment, look at this floor plan, I got like a nice bedroom plus then, this is a very good unit, straight up unit. Why should I buy this? Maybe I find someone, maybe two friends buy it. I live in a bedroom, you live in the den. <coughs> I put the money, you rent it, on and on and on. <clears throat> okay, so less work, more results. Uh, and and uh, the, the other uh, perspective of this point is double the efforts and quadruple the results. So it's very similar, just a different way to say it. Say, 
you know, I want to if if I put two people in a room, you know, the sum of the two is always greater than one plus one. That's kind of a gestalt thing. So if we both work together, we can achieve because of because of everything we put together, the energy we put together, and the effort we put together, and how we push each other, and we we uh, promote each other, and we help each other. So we'll actually achieve more than if we're working separately. I'm over here, and you over there. So let's say you have uh, two hundred thousand dollars to invest. A typical situation: you come to me, see, oh, see, where do I invest the money? But maybe you also want management. Maybe you also need. Uh, tenant okay so in this case the partnership is limited to the execution to the operation but it may not be percentage wise but I'll give you an example I have a friend uh, who invests up north okay north of Toronto like three hours north and, and over and he has partners and they actually give him the money to invest in these houses usually uh, multi-families and they invest in these houses and he runs them and manages them and he get percentage of the property itself okay so they put the money uh, he's very reliable. He's doing the same picture. He's doing uh, great work, um, and they trust him. The investors trust him, and they basically give him the money and say, "You go invest. You go buy the property. You go manage it. You do everything it takes, and we're going to give you a percentage over the property." That's very, very nice. That's that's a good thing because now everyone feels they're getting something out of it. You know, I'm putting the money. This guy's reliable. He's uh, he's making the moves for me, and I don't have really to worry about anything else. I'm going to find a property here with a bit. Um, more colorful information. Let's look at another search, okay? Just gonna go back to my own site. It's the easiest thing to do. I look at the, this link called Condo with Pools. So it's gonna pull, pull out. <laughs> uh, I preset Toronto here, and then all the buildings that are registered that have pools uh, will pop up here, okay? Remember that the value of information is the value you put in that means that you know whatever the information put into the listing that's what you get out uh, this is a th by the way this is a three bedroom penthouse unit at king blue at a million bucks it's on the market for a while it's a bit of a i think once they get the keys probably don't have the keys yet uh, people will see it and then they buy it so uh, that that's a good possibility you say oh my god a million dollars yes but it's three bedroom um if if you say put three tenants in these three bedrooms each and you get fifteen hundred dollars from each bedroom um, you're looking at forty five hundred dollars a month okay so that's that could be an income maybe five thousand a month so that's sixty thousand a year then you can start doing your numbers and see if it's if it's worth a while uh, to invest in this kind of property and um, what else you can do is the partner that brings the funds can put more money in and to to balance the amount of expenses you have and remember, the three basic expenses for every condo uh, that we look at is the mortgage, the condo fees, and the taxes. House, obviously, instead of condo fees, will have maintenance, which the owner has to do themselves. So the nice thing about the condo is that the maintenance fees are fixed, and I know that if anything breaks, I don't have to do anything about it because the condo uh, will take care of it. The only thing that breaks within the unit is my responsibility, and usually that amounts to an appliance, you know, once in, in 10 years, no big deal. But if uh, the problem with the roof or the garage, a homeowner can get, get hit with a, a bill of $10,000 to fix roof or garage or more, um, I don't have that in the condo. Okay? And I also have the reserve fund and all that stuff. So that's, that's a lot of times uh, investors that prefer investing in condos because they're a lot less work, a lot less effort, and things are taken care of for you. And then you only have to worry about things like maintaining the inside of the unit and the tenants themselves. Or one of the partner, one of the partners live lives in the unit, or maybe more. In this case, maybe maybe they all live. Maybe everyone bought together. Let's say you know it's a fair deal. Uh, Thirty-three, third, third, third. We each take a room. Maybe every year, you know, we move around the rooms. You find whatever situation works for you. Uh, one person allergic to nuts, so you say, okay, we're not gonna have any nuts in the kitchen. Whatever it is, you have to make sure that it works for you. Okay. Okay. Go back to my notes here. Um, what do you bring to the table? So the next thing to look at is what do you bring to the table, what each and every partner is bring to the table. So um, you can bring a few things. The first thing you can bring is knowledge. You understand the market. You know what to find the properties. You know what they're worth. You know how much you would pay for it. You know how much the rents would be. You know what the returns uh, you can expect to get on them. That's knowledge. Uh, you have an idea of what the market in Toronto is like, or maybe invest in Hamilton, what's the market is there like. You bring knowledge, you bring understanding of that particular thing. Now, there's a lot of partnerships. Uh, the easiest partnership to look at is when the company goes public, IPO, 
and really it's calling the public to buy stocks the, the people that buy shares really become partners but they become what we call a silent partners they don't have you know these are non voting stocks so the partner that buys in that puts the money do they have you got to make sure like what kind of rights they have are they allowed to get involved in the decisions are they the decision makers are they not are just silent partners which means they just they just put in and the other person manages you got to discuss all these things okay so that was knowledge the next thing is what you bring to the table is funds so the person who brings the funds or the company or the partner or the partners that bring the funds you know they usually have a lot of say and they can say you know this is the type of deal i'm looking for i just can't manage it or i don't have time to buy it or i'd like to invest somewhere that i'm not uh, have the knowledge and then they go to the person that we mentioned earlier with the knowledge and say you did the job you picked the property and that's usually the situation i find myself in so people come to me and say you know i have a hundred thousand to invest i have a million to invest or i have ten million to invest what would you buy help me make a portfolio help me create a portfolio and this is my investor profile you know i like condos i like home i like cash flow properties i like reconstruction i like assignment whatever the option is that's okay you have to understand what the person that brings the funds what they look for and then and then partner match with the person with the knowledge okay the next thing uh, you can bring to the table is sweat equity and by sweat equity i mean work what can you do like are you going to manage this unit are you going to clean it are you going to collect the rents what are you going to do here if you buy an old home will you be fixing the house okay uh maybe this house needs uh, this 28 million dollar home whatever it was it needs mega renovations who would do that stuff okay um now that is more typical if we look into areas like Hamilton. Let me do a search here. You'll find more older homes here. So I'll put City Hamilton. I probably have all kinds of crazy filters here. Let me reset the filters. Hamilton. So you can do the same. You go to yosi.searchrealty.co.co. So, okay, so we're starting to render Hamilton. And now I want to put at least one bath. Okay. And I want to put uh, price 200,000 and maximum price of 500. Okay. I'm not, and I'm not uh, limiting the search to a property type. I'm just going to leave it this way for now. Close here. And the pictures come up. And now we can start looking at, you know, um, and let's say I want to find a fixer upper. So I start scrolling here and look for something that looks a little, a little older to me or decrepit or maybe it was reduced or maybe just like an old house. And, you know, oh, that looks interesting. So I'll take a look uh, at this one here. That's a large property. That's a beautiful loft in Hamilton. There you go. So maybe I want to redo this loft. Yeah, it's a little old. It needs a tub. It needs a bath. So, you know. Like your typical cost to finish a bath, your typical cost to do this. And this is how you start. This is sweat equity. Sweat equity means what work will you do? So most common work is, of course, renovation. Uh, another common work is managing tenants or managing the property. But it could be anything else. Uh, here's an old little house. Maybe I want to uh, take this house. It's got a nice lot, but it's really small. Yeah, it's done nice and everything, but maybe I just want to take it down and build a new home or you know I want to fix the ceilings here because there are just drops here or I want to extend it so I will you know one part of maybe put the money and the other bring sweat equity they're gonna do the job they're gonna do the labor or they're gonna arrange for the job the last thing you can bring to the table is of course customers so customers are buyers tenants investors you know maybe we have a partnership where one of the partners brings money but not their money but bring investor money the other brings the listings the other does whatever. So that's what you would bring. Okay. Uh, the next thing, I call it, what's the deal? Let's go here. And, uh, I'm just randomly start searching stuff here to see if we can get some interesting stuff. This is all live, by the way. There are no edits to my videos. This is what it is. Okay. Um, so here, and let me filter here for one bath. And then we'll price 200 and maximum by 400. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to see, and I got 633 listings or more. Close the panel, get the picture. So you'll see in Guelph, first of all, in Guelph, you can get a lot more for your buck because it's further away from the core of Toronto. And 
some condos will always come in the low range but I'm looking for I'm looking for houses here I'm looking for houses to invest in so I can also filter and by uh, property type and let me look at duplex right duplex is good freehold detach freehold townhouse multi-family multiplex single family semi detach okay good enough for me townhouse there's one here that is with okay perfect good enough so here's a little house here and let's say this is the house so yeah it's got lots of room for improvements here it's just concrete i want to put a pool here i want to put a nice yard i want to extend this house i want to add a second floor on and on and on can i extract more value here can i bring the team together you know the floor is obviously patched in can i bring a team together to make this house and maybe invest fifty thousand dollar in the house and make two hundred thousand dollars over it okay so how long would it take who's going to do what all and on so who is doing what the second is what's the deal who's paying for what so um, let's say we bought the house, everything's okay, but then something broke, or I want to renovate, or I need to add the room. Who's paying for that? So, you know, some of these things you'll know up front, ahead, and you'll understand like who's doing it, but sometimes not. And if that's not happening, um, then you have to think of what if, what if, what if. What happens if I needed to fix something? So maybe you have a reserve fund uh, of your own, not the condo reserve fund, but a private reserve fund, a repository. So, you know, I'm putting aside. 10 or 20 or 30 thousand dollars for uh, whatever comes of course get the insurance all that stuff okay uh, what's the deal who is responsible for what okay so um, <clears throat> if the fridge broke or the tenant skipped on payments or whatever it is it was a problem who is going to deal with the problem who's going to fix that okay that's what I want to know uh, you got to talk um, to your partners about this thing okay the next one is who owns and what percentage so before you get into the deal or as you go into the deal you have to understand between the two or three or more of you who is doing what um, what what's uh, what kind of ownership you get so for example my friend that does the homes up north he gets between a third and a half of the house but he does not put his own money but he travels in the car every week he deals with everything and that's why he gets so that's sweat equity in a way uh, he puts a lot of time and effort into his stuff in order to get that that thing in the meantime of course he has other sources of income whether it's a job consulting whatever he does uh, but that's good because that enables him uh, to own real estate with no money he puts time and effort into it so who owns what so um, <clears throat> commercial listings here too because we haven't separated them um, but you know commercial listing is a good idea too to look at so let's say you want to buy a laundromat so who's going to collect all the change uh, you know laundromats are great who's going to bring the change uh, to the bank who's going to deposit the funds who's going to service the machines who's going to be there who's going to take care of something who's going to take care of the boiler or the machine when it bro on and on and on so once you do that you realize who owns what and at the end you have to make um, very clear crisp rules your expectations your roles and your responsibilities okay what happens if so go through the scenarios what happens if there's a problem in your investment whether it's commercial because you can buy commercial real estate or you bought uh, residential real estate what happens if what happens is the problem what happened if the tenant didn't pay what happens if the tax went up what happened if one of the partners died what happens what happens what happens okay what happens if you got sick what happens if you couldn't do it okay so what happens if you bought the coffee shop but it got closed you bought this coffee shop everything looks good but then uh, what do you know there was some health problem and you got shut down by the health department okay what happens what happens what happens um, okay get that insurance uh, next point here plan and write down action for each so obviously you're not going to come up with all the scenarios but it's good to discuss between all the partners what happens and that's that's your contingency plan contingency what happens if what happens if um, somebody saw a mouse and complained and I got shut down what happens if the hot water blew in the house that we bought what happens if the condo fees went up or down right if the condo fee went down which does happen quite often in Toronto if, if the condos are managed uh, better and more efficiently then you have overage of money who gets that money 
even if it only drops by thirty dollars a month, you know, but that's three hundred sixty dollars a year. Who gets what and when? So if you have, or or maybe you got a tenant that decided to pay more than you thought, you're asking two thousand for the property, but the tenant pays twenty two hundred, and you save another fifty, and you rented your parking. Maybe you're making three hundred dollars a month extra. You didn't even think about. It. So who gets that? What do you do with this money? Do you put it back into the mortgage? Do you spread it between the partners? Do you reinvest it? You know, you have to discuss this, okay? And my last uh, uh, point here at what happens if, under what happens if is make it real, don't fool yourself. So, you know, a lot of people make like crazy plans, but they're not real. Uh, the, more, the more knowledge you have, the more experience you have, which is one of the partners should be very knowledgeable, experience always helps. Um, Ideally, they've seen a lot of uh, a lot of uh, cases, and they can come up with something and say, you know, that's uh, that's an idea. We can do this. We can do that. Okay. So there you go. What happens if? So go through the scenarios. Write them down. Be real about it, and discuss with your partners what you're going to do. Okay. Now let's talk about the deal structure. And again, it could be it could be residential. It could be commercial. It doesn't matter. Um, let's go back here, and I'll put a freehold detached. So obviously, I'm not gonna get five million. Okay, so I want to buy this. There's a bunch of homes here. Okay, so <clears throat> whether I'm buying a nineteen million eight hundred thousand dollar home, or I'm buying a two hundred thousand dollar pizzeria, uh, or I'm buying whatever, it doesn't matter. It's, it's the same, the same, the same. And hopefully, you start with a two hundred thousand dollar home in Guelph. And you upgrade to a four hundred thousand or six hundred in Hamilton, and then you come to the million dollar home, and then you know ten years later you can buy or less, maybe one year if you if you're lucky and you got it, uh, you buy the twenty million dollar mansion. There's Tiger. Look at these paintings of these sports people. That's an interesting house. So the hockey thing, nice wine cellar. Uh, that's kind of the boys' sports room looks like here. Nice little outdoor pool, some place to play, tanning deck. I'll take it. Twenty million. I'll take it. Very nice. That's a good place. Okay. So, what is the deal structure? First of all, you need to understand that anything is possible. Okay. Anything is possible means you need to really come up with stuff that is good for you and work for you. Anything is possible because there are no rules here. You got to make your own rules. You got to be mature confident and knowledgeable enough to make your own rules and make sure that the person you or persons or companies that you partner with uh, are like that that's a really nice place I don't know if I've been in that one but I've been into a very similar one it could be the one uber modern very very clean there's a little bridge in here oh yeah pool and of course the tennis court Okay, so anything is possible. Uh, another deal structure is the 50-50. So, you know, two friends come together, two sisters, two brothers, two cousins. That's kind of the sister-brother deal. Um, we both put everything the same. We just go 50-50 on everything. We need to be really tight, personally, socially, 50-50, because anything, uh, everything goes well great, but if anything breaks, so, you know, I have an unexpected expense, I still want to make sure that the 50-50 works so you have enough reserves for that. Okay? Some lots here. Um, the next deal I call it is the mom deal. The mom deal is usually, I call it 100 gifts. So 100% of the deposit, all the funds, uh, are come from one person, and it's a gift. That means that they don't want anything. So usually the parents, and I have a lot of clients, basically the parents buying for the kids. You know, the kids are going to university or leaving university and getting a job in the city. And then the parents will buy it for the kids. And then the parents will put the deposit and the condo goes under the kid's name and the kids pay for it. But of course, if the kids fall short, the parents have to cover up. So that's the mom deal. Uh, now, the friend deal is two old friends come together. One has a million dollar and the other is really good with their hands but no money so the friend goes you know what i'll buy this house and you sit here and maybe i get you i give you a percentage five ten twenty fifty percent uh, but you gotta fix the house you gotta make sure everything's cool and obviously i trust that you'll do the work because otherwise i can invest my million dollars elsewhere okay so that's the friend deal and of course there's the partner deal and the partner deal means it's straight up partnership 
and you set up your expectation you know I give the money and that's the work you have to do or you have some of the money and I have the rest of the money so maybe you put 30% of the funds and I put 70% of the funds but does that mean that you own 30 and I own 70 maybe maybe not we have to discuss it and agree before we do anything okay and once you agree go to a lawyer get a second opinion and have it written down and sign it okay okay the next thing is called who's calling the shots that's really important because especially when a problem happens so first of all you got to think of how are decisions made you need to make a decision like you need to rent the place you want to fix it you want to paint you want to sell it whatever it is how are decisions made one of the partners or more have an idea what to do and then you have to present it to the rest of the partners and then you discuss it how decisions made so various ways to do it okay sometimes you say you know who's a decision maker I'm the decision maker everything goes by me whether I put the money or not you know I'm the expert or I have the time or I put the money but we decide I'm the decision maker so maybe um, expenses or decisions up to a thousand dollars or certain amount you can do but anything over that we both have to agree and everything over that over ten thousand dollars only me because I put the money I want to control or I don't whatever it is okay maybe I have more more uh, knowledge or I trust that my decision um, would be good and maybe you're just young and starting out so the first couple of years I make all the decisions and then you can start making them okay uh, next thing about who's calling the shots is how are disagreements resolved so if I you know I think a and you think B I want to sell and you want to buy I want to renovate and you don't I want to put this tenant and you don't whatever it is so how do we resolve these things okay how do we discuss them what is the process um, of of, uh, of solving the disagreement okay and what happens is the next point is how are impasses resolved so if we reach an impasse you know I want to take this pool and make it into salt water pool and you say absolutely not I gotta dig under change the pump whatever it is so how do we resolve these things we have to have a process to resolve any any kind of decision but also if we've come to a decision we can just can resolve it's an impasse we're just stuck we have to find a way that we can do it okay I hope you're liking all these uh, fancy homes I'm showing you here along the talk they're kind of cool okay um, and of course the last one is what happens if what happens if there's a fire what happens if I died what happens if we can't do it what happens what happens what happens go through the scenarios and decide what happens if okay uh, the last topic uh, for how to invest in real estate with a partner how to buy real estate with a partner is the exit strategy how do you get out of the deal okay so I want to get out of this deal um, there's various ways why I want to get out of the deal um, something changed in my life I died I got married I had kids I need the money I don't have any money I don't like you I want to do it on my own whatever it is you know these are usually these are human reasons why you you would go these are exterior reasons you know motivational reasons and one of the partners or both need to get out so do we sell it do we have a shotgun clause which means you buy me out or I buy you out before we offer it to others um, <clears throat> do we have a set amount that we can say you know by this date you can buy me out or I can buy you out for this amount and by this date on and on and on so you got to think about these things and if you need some uh, ideas you can talk to your lawyer you can talk to a business consultant you can ask me and give you some ideas of, of what to do and what kind of scenarios you may look at and and you can look and you can decide which one you want to take at the end of the day you know you got to do it together because you want to do it together and most of the obviously I'm showing you these crazy homes here but most of the partnerships you'll find actually on on uh, either the lower end homes or maybe there's a family with an excess of money or people that have you know, millions of dollars they doing the same just on a larger scale like this one here okay but the process is exactly the same partnership is partnership it's a very nice home um, partnership is partnership so regardless if I'm paying uh, 13 million 680 for this home or I'm paying six hundred eighty thousand dollars for a little house um, the partnership is still the same okay Who's bringing what to the table? Who's got the knowledge? Who's got the resources? Who's got the money? Who's got the access? Who's going to do what? Who's putting the sweat equity? Who's putting the time? What happens if all these things you got to make sure that you cover as much as you can before? And of course, the exit strategy. So, 
what do I want out of this? When I get it into this deal, how do I want it to end? Ideally, what's my exit strategy? What does my partner or partners want? Uh, what's the end date? Is there a trigger, like a certain event? This happens, you know, if the, the estimated value of the property goes up over a million dollars, we sell it or over a million, I have an opportunity to buy it out at that amount. All these things, you know, um, if somebody died, if somebody like can't work anymore. So it's nice to think about these things before and even enter into a written agreement if you can. Obviously, you can never uh, cover all the options, but if you start, you know, it gets you in a good position and you're also going to understand from uh, the discussions with a partner what to do. Uh, a great opportunity to do it is flipping houses, of course. Uh, when you flip houses, you buy decrepit homes and that a perfect classic situation for someone to put the money in and the other person take care of the flip. Okay? Very good. So, how to buy real estate with a partner? This is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Investing. Lots of options for you. You can do this. You can buy in Toronto. You can buy outside of Toronto. Most important thing is, you know, claim your stake today because tomorrow it's going to be more. That's it.